Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're trying out Caesar Brick HTV in a couple of different colors to see what this product is all about. So Caesar Brick is a thick HTV. I mean, I would say six, eight times as thick as regular HTV. So when you apply it to various surfaces, it really stands off of the surface. Now this is really great for products like hats, in my opinion, because if I wanted a product that stood off of a hat and wanted to use something like Puff HTV, using the Cricut Hat Press, you need to apply quite a bit of pressure with that. I haven't exactly been successful with Puff HTV and the Cricut Hat Press, but the Caesar Brick presses like a dream on hats. And then I was able to use it on just regular fabric, cardstock, a shirt with a couple different colors. I even tried a couple different colors. I did some more intricate designs, some easier designs. Just sort of played around with this product to see what it could do. So if you're looking for a different look for your project, something that looks like almost faux leather on your surface, Caesar Brick might be the product that you're looking for. So I would definitely give it a try, especially if you're looking for like a patch look on a hat, but with HTV. Caesar Brick will definitely give you that. It almost seriously looks like a faux leather patch applied to this hat, and I am in, am in love with it on hats. Like, it's absolutely my favorite on hats. Now, the larger you get your design, say on this shirt, the stiffer it'll be, right? So it is a really thick HTV, and it's extremely stiff on the fabric. I did wanna test it with a larger design just to make sure it would work so you would know, but be aware that it will be really stiff. Now, on something like a hat, it really matter how stiff it is, so that really depends on your application. But if you're putting it on a shirt, it might matter how stiff it is. And I was able to do some pretty intricate designs, like on this little zipper pouch, so I did really like the product itself. I even put it on a note card, just so I could see what it would look like on paper, and it almost gives an embossed look to the paper when I did like a tone-on-tone -tone design, like navy on navy. So definitely some interesting things that you can do with this. So let's take a look at the supplies and play with Caesar Brick. So we're gonna use the Caesar Brick HTV in a variety of colors. I find that the green matte works best. So the standard grip matte, a brayer is helpful, and a weeding tool. And then you can cut this with any Cricut machine using the glitter HTV setting. And you can also apply it with any heat press. So I'm gonna use my Easy Press as well as the Hat Press to make a hat just to show the variety of crafts that you can make with Caesar Brick. So let's see how to cut this material. So I have my designs pulled up in Cricut Design Space. I'm just gonna say make it. And then, then you do wanna mirror each of these mats. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up and mirror each of my mats. And I am gonna cut all four colors and I'm just gonna use one of the colors as an example. So let's cut one of the colors. So you do still put the HTV shiny side down on the mat, and then I like to run my brayer over it. Now you will notice this is only 10 inches wide. So we do wanna go back, cancel this, go to our mat, and change the material size to something that is 10 inches wide or less. And I would just need to do this on the ones that are going over 10 inches, or you could go out and move your items around so that they don't go over the 10 inch mark on your canvas. Then we'll click next. So I will pick, I find glitter iron on setting works pretty well. You might try a cardstock setting, but it is very thick. And then I'm gonna scroll over. So then I just find the navy blue mat, click all materials, pick glitter iron on. That's what the one that works best for me. If you find that cardstock setting works best for you, that's fine as well. So now we'll go ahead and load our mat into the machine. This cuts with just the fine point blade and we'll press go to cut. Then once that's done, we'll just unload the mat from the machine. And now let's take a look at weeding this material. You weed this HTV just like any other HTV. So I like to start in the corner, just sort of peel it back. It actually weeds really easily, even though it's super thick. Um, I was expecting it 
to be much more difficult to weed and it just sort of just comes off. So the glitter iron on setting, I find that sometimes I need to use less pressure for that. So you might try a thinner setting or just use the less pressure all the time. So I do get a few places that it cuts through the carrier sheet. Not enough to bother me or ruin the project, but it does cut through some places if I'm not careful. So I'm just gonna continue and weed all these designs and then we'll look at pressing this HTV. Here are all of my designs weeded. So one of them, I'm gonna use two colors. Now I don't think this would layer well one on top of one another, just my instinct tells me it would not work that way. It's so thick. So I am gonna inset it. This is a simple design. This is a little more intricate. And this is very intricate. So the only thing about this is the carrier sheet is not very sticky at all. So you need to be very careful as you're weeding it, especially with a design this intricate. I had one of these dots lift as I was weeding it and I had to use a little piece of heat tape and try to stick it into place because it's not gonna stick back on this carrier sheet at all once it's lifted up. So that's the only thing I would caution you is to be careful when weeding your designs, especially if they're fairly intricate. But I did wanna do some more intricate designs just to see how they would work. I'm gonna start with this simple zipper pouch. So I do always preheat my material. Now this material is 310 degrees for 20 seconds and I'm gonna do that for all of these materials. So I'm just gonna preheat it a little. Then just add the design. All right, so I mentioned that this is not sticky at all. So what I do most of the time is stick it down with a couple of pieces of heat tape just to make sure it stays in location as I add my heat press or easy press. And then I'm gonna press it 310, 20 seconds. And I apply maybe medium pressure to the easy press as I'm pressing this down. All right, you do wanna allow this to cool before you peel back this carrier sheet. And if you will notice, I did add an easy press mat inside of this zipper pouch, and I did not put my easy press on the zipper itself so that it had full contact with the HTV. So let's allow this to cool. Then once this is cooled, I remove the tape from the top and bottom. Now this definitely is a case where you could reuse the heat tape. And then I'm just gonna peel back this carrier sheet, making sure everything is stuck to my zipper pouch. And then that little piece of heat tape is over there and it worked, it held that in place fine. So now this zipper pouch is done. Let's take a closer look. Hopefully you can tell just how much this stands off the surface. It almost feels like you've added faux leather to the surface of your project. So it really stands off of the surface and you can feel it as you rub your fingers across. It's definitely a unique look for your projects. To do two colors, we're gonna press one color at a time. So I have my first color on the shirt and I am going to press 310, 20 seconds. Then I'm gonna allow this to cool before I remove the carrier sheet. Then we can peel back the carrier sheet on this first layer. Then we'll just locate the second layer inside that first. So you should be able to kind of feel it lock in to place. And again, we'll wanna hold it into place. You might wanna use more heat tape than you did before, just to make sure this does not shift. And then we'll wanna make sure we cover this all up. So you can see the blue is sticking out here. We wanna make sure to cover that up. And you can use the carrier sheet from the blue that you just removed, or you could use a piece of parchment paper, butcher paper, just anything to cover it up. Teflon sheet would work. Um, so I am using quite a few pieces just to make sure it stays in location. Then I have a piece of butcher paper here. I'm just gonna lay that on top. And we're gonna press same time and temperature. Then we'll just allow this to cool once again before peeling it back. Then once that's cool, we'll just peel back the carrier sheet of the white. And your shirt is done with two colors of Caesar Brick HTV. So I was expecting to have problems with this on this first layer. I thought that the carrier sheet of the second layer would leave marks, but it did not. The heat tape didn't leave marks, it looks really good. So on a shirt this large of a design 
will feel really thick. It is recommended for smaller designs, but I did want to kind of put it to the test. So it would feel really thick, but I think it would be applicable for some applications. So I wanted to make sure to do a large design as well as the smaller ones I'll be doing. This is mostly used for something like on a pocket or on a chest design, but this full size design does work in case you have an application that you need a full size design that is thick and stands up off the shirt. Now let's add this product to some cardstock. So this is a card and I'm going for like a tone on tone look here. I would cover your cardstock with something just because the heat and paper don't really mix. And I'm, I'm gonna do it for the same time, however. So once you're done pressing, allow it to cool once again, peel back that carrier sheet. And this is a really cool effect on cardstock. So it almost looks embossed, which you can deboss with the Cricut, but you can't emboss really. So this is a great way to get that look on cardstock with an HTV product. So one fun application for this product is hats. So I've added the HTV to my hat and I'm using the Cricut Strong Heat Tape to hold it down. I went ahead and preheated my hat press and I'm just going to press this design for the full time and I'm just gonna hold it in place. It's a pretty small design. If you have a larger design, you can move the hat press back and forth. Then once that's done, we'll just go ahead and remove the hat press. Again, allow this to cool before we peel the carrier sheet back. Then once that's cooled down, we can just peel this carrier sheet back. And this is a really, really awesome product on hats. It almost looks like you applied a leather patch to the hat in white. It looks really amazing in person. So I would definitely, if you wanna make some awesome hats, pick up the Caesar Brick. So I would definitely say of all the applications I did that the hat was my favorite. I did also off camera, I made this little banner. I did like it on the banner as well. So I think home decor for me, hats and paper would be where I would like to see this product. The zipper pouch though was probably my second favorite just because it gave a really cool effect to the pouch itself. So there are some applications I think where you are really gonna love Caesar Brick. If you're looking for something unique, something to stand off of the product and not sort of blend in and be thin, Caesar Brick would definitely be something that you might enjoy. So you can get this look with other products. So there is Puff HTV. So it puffs when you press it and gives like a puff paint look almost but I do find you definitely need medium to heavy pressure, more on the side of heavy pressure to get puff to work correctly. You can't always get that with something like an easy press. The hat press, I had almost an impossible time getting that. So if you're having trouble with the puff and getting the look you want, this gives you the look, that stand off look, without needing that heavy pressure. So you saw I did it with the easy press, even a hat press really easily, just like any other HTV, and you get the look that stands off of your project. So hopefully that helps you explain everything about Caesar Brick. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this product or anything I made today, feel free to ask those in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.